to help with trigonometry in general, we need to have an understanding of bearings because we will do questions where you're either given a bearing or you need to give a bearing. And there's two types of bearings that we're going to talk about. There's a true bearing and a compass bearing. A true bearing is an angle from north going in a clockwise direction to the direction that we're considering. A compass bearing is where you start with a north or a south and you follow it by a certain angle in an easterly or a westerly direction. So we're going to complete this table and first up we'll do the true bearings. So for A, A is heading off in this direction. A to, to find the true bearing, if we start at north and we come around in a clockwise direction, we've moved 42 degrees. So the true bearing for A is 42 degrees and we usually put the letter T afterwards just to signify that it's a true bearing. Okay, the second question B, and I'll just rub out the first lot. Just, B is heading off it's almost south, but it's 15 degrees short of south. So if we look at, this is our true bearing from north clockwise round to the direction that we're considering. It's 15 degrees short of due south. And due south is 180 degrees. So this bearing is 180 degrees. Subtract 15 degrees, which is a bearing of 165 degrees and we'll make that a true bearing. Okay, now moving on to C. C is heading off in this direction and the angle from north around is that. It's going 180 plus a bit more. Now, we know that from this 31 degrees here, if we, if we keep coming round to due west which is 270 degrees and then we subtract 31 we'll get the true bearing of C so that is 270 degrees subtract 31 degrees which is 239 degrees and that's a true bearing and with D the true bearing is all the way around to here and you can see we've come around 90, 180, 270, and it's 52 degrees past 270, so it'll be 270 degrees plus 52 degrees, which is 322 degrees true bearing. So that's got our true bearings done, and we've had a bearing in each of what we'd call the quadrants. And depending on the information, you may need to add and subtract to get what you're after. Um, and very difficult to come up with generalizations for rules, but common sense usually prevails. Okay, let's go back and do A again now as a compass bearing. So when you look at A, basically out of north and south, it's north, and then we need an angle and then an east and a west. So to get into the direction that we're talking about with A, we need to go in an easterly direction. So it is north, 42 degrees east. And B, out of north and south, we're going in a southerly direction and it will be 15 degrees east. With C, between north and south, it's going to be south. And how from south around to it, this angle here is going to be 90 minus 31, which is going to be 59 degrees. So it is south 59 degrees west. And then D, between north and south, it's north. And from north, you need to come around a certain angle in a westerly direction, and that angle is 90. Take away 52, which is equal to 38 degrees. So 
that means that direction D or bearing D is north 38 degrees west.